Okay, so today I get to do something kind of fun. I'm gonna take a trip from Blender, a 3D software program, into Procreate, a 2D software program, and I'm gonna use Procreate to paint the things I made in Blender, and then bring it back to Blender. Today I'm gonna to take something from Blender 3D, which is this excellent free piece of software that gets better and better all the time, and I'm gonna create objects there, bring them into Procreate, which is not free, but it's super reasonable, two-dimensional art software that you can use on iPad, which recently got an upgrade that allows you to paint on three-dimensional objects. So I'm gonna bring the 3D object in there, then bring it back to Blender, where presumably I could do all sorts of things with it, like make high-quality renders, or make it an asset in a video game, or part of an animation. So let's get started. Okay, so delete the default box, create an icosphere, that has five subdivisions, then make it smooth, pop into edit mode, grab its northern pole, and use proportional editing to pull it down with sharp proportional editing, then switch to inverse square to pull it back up. Do the same thing on the bottom. Grab the southernmost pole, use sharp proportional editing to pull it up, and then use inverse square to pull it back down again. Grab five points that surround the southern pole, Use smooth proportional editing to pull them down until you get those apple bumps at the bottom. That's the apple body complete. Hide the apple body, create a cylinder. Take the bottom face, make it one tenth the size. Use loop cut to add a bunch of slices. Then scale the cylinder on the XY plane to be one tenth its size. Move it up so that the bottom tip touches its origin. Then add an empty, move it one unit on the X axis and apply a simple deform modifier on the cylinder. Use the empty as the origin, set it to bend, set it to the Y axis, and rotate it until it's just right. Turn back on your apple body, shrink your stem down and put it someplace that you feel is right. Hide the stem, hide the apple body, create a circle, select two opposing points, turn back on proportional editing with sharp, and scale so that you get a football shape, then Fill those two opposing points and create a face using fill on either side. Then take one of the faces, rotate it from the origin by about 30 degrees. Then take the other face and rotate it by about negative 30 degrees so that you get this nice butterfly leaf. Add a solidify modifier, give it some thickness and apply that modifier. Move the leaf so that one tip is at the origin and then bring back your apple and stem and scale and rotate and move the leaf until it is in the right spot. And the apple is done. Next step, creating UV maps. Select the leaf, go into edit mode and use smart UV project. Then do the same thing to the apple using smart UV project and then do the same thing to the stem and all your UV maps are now created. The next step is to create a material for each. So bring up the shader editor, select the apple body, create a new material and call it apple material do one for leaf material, and do one for stem material. Once that's done, you're ready to export using Wavefront OBJ so that Procreate can pick it up. Get that OBJ file onto your iPad by email, text message, or by sending it through the iCloud drive. Bring it up in files, send it to Procreate, and it will appear. Each object has their own layer. Let's select the leaf base layer and fill it with a simple brown, and that's already done. Next, we'll paint the leaf. When you paint the leaf and there's an object in the way, the paint won't apply. So it's probably wise to get in the habit of hiding the shapes that you're not working on at any given moment. We're gonna hide the apple body and the stem. And now we can go to town painting that leaf. Shapes can take on additional layers. So let's add a layer so that we can control our artwork better. We'll apply some lines to the leaf to give it some texture. And you'll see that the lines are all on their own layer. Lastly, let's take a look at the apple. Let's choose a custom brush. We'll make a nice flat brush out of monoline. We'll give it some metallic and some roughness. Play around with both of those features and take a look. If it's too shiny, it looks a little bit like a Christmas ornament, but we can change those styles until we find the material that's just right. And then go about painting all over that apple. We can go a little further and add a little orange blush. We can get a spray paint and add a little bit of blush here and there until it looks somewhat natural. We can take the layer that has the orange blush and start manipulating its blending mode and also its opacity until it feels like it fits. Then bring back your stem and your leaf and the apple's complete. When you're ready, export from Procreate using the same format, OBJ. 
When you export from Procreate, the OBJ file will come with an entire folder filled with PNGs for each texture. Choose a location and rename that folder. And once it's saved, it contains all of the different textures inside for metallic roughness and color for all three of our shapes. Let's go back to Blender, start a new project, delete the square. Let's open up the new object file inside of the folder that we created from Procreate. And when we switch to rendered mode, we can see the colors and textures. What's missing is the roughness and metallic. For each shape, we're gonna add an additional image texture node in the shader editor, and we're gonna open up the appropriate texture. For this one, I'll put in Apple Roughness and create another image texture node and put in Apple Metallic, and then just use my noodles to connect it to the appropriate location in the texture node. Because there's a lot more properties in Blender than there are in Procreate, you may have to bump up your specular or some other features to make that shininess fit the way you want it to. Next, we'll go into the stem and add two more image texture nodes and put the appropriate roughness and metallic files in there and then connect those nodes to its material node and then do the same thing for the leaf. Two image texture nodes, appropriate files, and then connect them to the material node. And once that's done, there's the finished apple. Wow, that was a blast. I really enjoyed doing that and I hope that you enjoyed watching me enjoy doing it. And uh, maybe I'll make some more 3D videos in the future. Let me know what you think. Take care.